Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a 9800 GTX Plus launched as the last GPU of Nvidia's 9800 series lineup and successor to the GX2, GTX and GT. What's interesting is that it's the only GTX Plus card that Nvidia released and came in either a 512 megabyte or 1 gigabyte GDDR3 variant. It's essentially an overclocked GTX and the one we have here is the XFX 512MB version. The only giveaway that it's the GTX Plus version, before installing it of course, is this tiny sticker on the back. Launched in 2008 at a cost of $229 or pounds, it was aimed at the mid-range market and in direct competition with AMD's 4850 that cost a little bit less. So spec-wise, this XFX version features a 738MHz core clock with 128 CUDA cores and GDDR3 memory clocked at 2200MHz with a 256-bit interface. It supports up to 2560x1600 resolution and has two DVI connectors as well as an S-Video out. Despite its need for two 6-pin connectors, it only requires a 450 watt PSU, so isn't too power hungry. You could also SLI this thing three ways if you wanted. The biggest issue though is its lack of DX11 support, meaning that you won't be able to play most modern titles, but its low price and fairly wide used availability may make it tempting if you're only into older games or you want something for a secondary machine on a small budget. We paid just £12 for this, which is about $15, so for a home or office system that should still let you play a few games, it really isn't much money at all. I'd also like to point out just how good this thing looks. This is from a time when GPUs were covered in fancy graphics, with this one in particular having some sort of turbo printed on the side to show you how fast it was. Compare that to this modern 1060, and although the performance is worlds apart, a little bit of decoration wouldn't go amiss. So with all that said, it's time to get into some games. Remember, this card only supports DX10, but we went as new as we could with these titles to push this thing to its limit. We're also using an i5-4460 and 8GB of DDR3, clocked at 1600MHz. So first up, let's get into Bioshock Infinite. We chose the settings and resolutions that gave us the best graphical fidelity and performance throughout, so here we went with 1080p and the low settings preset. This gave us around 60 FPS on average, but dropped to the mid 40s and perhaps a little bit lower during intense gunfights like the one on your screen now. I was actually impressed though, but one thing I will mention is that this card is quite loud, nothing that turning your volume up won't fix though. Dota 2 next with the fastest settings preset and 1080p once again to see 100 FPS on average over half an hour. We recorded with MSI Afterburner today, and to be honest, this probably impacted our frame rate by about 2 to 3, so nothing major, and you shouldn't expect a vast difference to the results that you see here. So here is where things get more demanding. We fired up GTA 5 at 1366 by 768 and lowered every single setting until it could be lowered no more. To be honest, we probably could have turned things up a little bit, but the game still looked okay and driving into the city would have knocked us down below playable frames. As things were though, we saw 40 frames per second on average, which was smooth enough and a very nice result. 900 or 1080p was a no-go though. So sticking with GTA, we tried 5's predecessor, 4, a notoriously unoptimized game that released around the same year as this card. Fortunately, we were able to set our resolution back to 1080p and the game ran very well with medium settings. Unlike GTA 5, which even at minimum settings exceeded the 9800's memory limit by about 400 megabytes, GTA 4 at these settings stayed well within it, resulting in 40 frames per second overall. There was some stutter here and there, but it's GTA 4. It stutters on everything. Next up, it's Metro Last Light Redux with 1280x720p res and minimum settings from the options menu. Before we got outside, this thing did a bit better, say 10 frames faster, but venturing into the wasteland saw 38 frames per second overall, but the game still looked good and performed very well. If you wanted to turn things up a bit as you went back into the metro, you could, but it's probably worth just sticking with minimum settings here for the best experience. So finally we've got Rocket League at Full HD which ran at 60fps with the performance or lowest settings. 
We could have turned things up a bit more, but for this game's fast-paced nature, I'd recommend trying to stick as close to 60 as possible for the best experience. That said, maxing this game out would return low to mid-20s, so don't go turning things up that high on a card like this. Well, there we have it. NVIDIA's 8.5-year-old and only GTX Plus named graphics card. I suppose these days they write OC instead of Plus. But personally I think Plus sounds cooler, especially when it comes to marketing, and maybe manufacturers have lost a little bit of passion. All I know is that the 9800 GTX Plus is still capable of playing some games with lower settings and resolutions, and it's a shame about the DX11 thing, but I can't recommend this as an everyday GPU anyway. If you're into older hardware though, just for the fun of it, or want something to proudly display on a shelf, then the 9800 GTX Plus is certainly something to add to your collection, and I've enjoyed my time with it. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video just as much as I did making it. If you like this video, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm sorry I've sounded a bit weird today, weirder than usual, I've got a bit of a cold, <laughs> but... Subscribe to the channel guys if you haven't done so already. Hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.